What's going on, guys? Welcome, welcome. I'm glad everybody's here on this wonderful Sunday at 6 o'clock. One of the cool things is we're going to start going live at 6 p.m. This way you have time to fall in line with AC Infinity. After that, hi again, and so on and so forth. So it gives you a whole Sunday night of content evenly spread out. So tonight, I'm going to be featuring my friend Gronomics. He'll be here in a little bit. And I'm also going to be going live from the basement to show you guys the basement setup for the minimalistic 4x8 grow designed to show what most people are growing with is, you know, small operations in tight spaces as a home grower. We don't have the full facilities like other people do. Um, but it's going to be awesome because I'm trying to push two to more than four pounds per the four by eight off of the eight plants. And I want to show you how to do that in a shorter amount of time. So, you know, you don't have to wait all year to get a lot of weight, especially if you're like me, who's doing, you know, making RSO and making dabs and stuff like that. You know, it takes a lot of input. So it's one of those things where you're going to need a lot. So also I want to talk to you guys about the discord community that I'm having. Um, we're working on that now. Soon you'll be able to go there. Also, we're going to have people showing off their grows, talking about what they have going on, and really kind of engaging in that community so we can kind of grow and thrive together. This way allows you more exposure for what you're doing and allows more people to view what you have going on because we're so passionate about what we do and we love what we do and we want to share that with the world. So the Discord community is going to be another one that you can join just like there's so many other Discord communities and really have that opportunity to connect. What's going on, Basement Grow Show, Track My Grow, Crimson, Saul, Umbrella, Andreas, what's going on, homies? Um, so pretty much um, right now, what I have going on is I'm going to show you the upstairs and the downstairs. I'm also going to get in Gronomics here in a second. Um, he's going to have him show off your his grow, and then later around like the 6.30 mark, getting closer to the end, um, I have two people who want to volunteer to jump on, and uh, you can show off your grow as well. So let's bring Gronomics on here. What's going on, my dude? How's it going? How's it going, bro? Pretty good, pretty good. Just uh, enjoying the Easter Sunday. Yeah. How's um how's your Easter? Anything special? Do you go chase um an Easter bunny? <laughs> no, uh, I just do it. I just have a little Easter for my son, you know, at home, and that's about it. Nice. So you got a four by eight in the back there too, huh? Yes, <laughs> sir. Awesome. Yeah. So here, check this out. I'm gonna walk us around real quick. I don't know if you've seen the whole setup too, but um. Oh, nice. Coming on through here, this right here is the downstairs. So this is where we originally did all of our printing and all of our t-shirts and everything, which we still do. But instead of trying to be a products company, it's more for exclusiveness and, um, you know, Madman Plant products and exclusivities. We got all of our printers right here. We got the t-shirt machine, the sticker machine. Um, we can do our own patches over here. This is where I do all the photos and like the video clips of everything. So when things come in, this is kind of cool. You guys can check this out on Amazon. It's called Takers. It's like a grow tent, but like a photo studio. And it comes with the lighting. So when you turn the lights on, if it was plugged in, which is not, um, you can see up top, you got three rows of lights. So it's really, really nice. And then wow. over here, we cleaned it up, so we moved some things around. Because this is where all the shipping happens, all like, you know, the uh, giveaways packaged up and everything. And then right here, um, I have my little dab station area where we press all the dabs. So this used to be upstairs, but I moved it down so I could be more involved with it. And then right now, we're still building out the, um, the setup, so it'll be running off the uh, aero mixer pump. Um, so these are all the heads that will run into the system. And what's cool is 
I have the ecosystem with AC Infinity hooked up. So now uh, my plants are at, or my lights are at 50% power. And it's only 79 degrees inside the tent right now. And it's totally closed up and um, can stay that way. So it's nice. pretty cool. And unfortunately, you won't be able to see too much right now because the little heads are just starting to pop up. I just threw these in yesterday. But um, these are all three gallons. And we have over here, we have Soul Fire Purple Marmalade. We have Soul Fire Creature Panic, Creature Panic, Creature Panic. And that's the Cookies Cherry Zaletto right back there. So we're, and then we're also powering everything under the... Um, the HLG 750 Diablo with the reflectors, and then we also have the Tomahawk right here as well, which um, I'm about to upgrade these lights to their newer lights um, as soon as they come out. So downstairs, I used to have two 4x4s set up, um, and that did great, and they were faced this way, but now you can actually like see the window and everything coming in, and it's actually pretty nice um, set up, so... I'm really enjoying the new space and everything. And then, real quick, I'll take you upstairs, hold on for one second, to the Grow Studio and um, show you what you got there. And then Gronomics, after me, dude, I want you to share your stuff. And what's cool about Gronomics is we have a podcast together and Gronomics has an awesome backstory and stuff. So definitely show him some love, like his page, He's a huge fan of ours. All right. And now we're in the Gross Studio, which most people are familiar with. And over here, we got um, Lovin' in Her Eyes. These are the something Cadillacs. And back there, that's the um, purple, um, what is it called? It's PM2. It's, it's purple... Um, mandarin i think it is or something like that and then over here these go downstairs so in my kitchen i have a four by four so these are about to go downstairs these are getting cloned out right now in the air mixer and then my prized possession right here is this monstera dude look at this shit nice and what's cool about this monstera is it actually came into the room or like this size so, and this is a variegated, so that's why it has that off coloring on it. So, we have a whole botanical side as well. Like, check this out. You see that plant? Look at this. Oh, wow. Isn't that awesome? That's called a Tildingen Ring of Fire right there. That's a rattlesnake plant. These are birds of fire, which um, you have these in Arizona and California. And these, um, I'm trying to figure out how they bloom, but they look like birds sitting on the leaves. It's fucking cool as shit. Oh, wow. But, yeah. That's awesome. And then you see my other monstera leaves. This thing is growing huge. Wow. And I have another, <laughs> I have another one coming in right there. Oh, is it it's splitting off from it? Yeah, so when the monstera grows, which I actually need to train this a little bit because they're they used to be separated, now they're growing on top of each other. But when the monstera grows, it grows like out from here, and it'll spiral up. And what happens is the leaf will start to unfold. So the leaf will be curled all the way up, and like in a pencil. Okay, and it just like a fruit unfolds roll up. Itself. And when it unfolds, this is what happens. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah, what's actually really cool is I'm actually feeding them Athena nutrients. Oh, really? Yeah. See, we got my Athena, and then we got our High Shield, High Clean, and High Grazyme. Nice. Can't, now, yep. now, do those type of plants they have a complete different feed schedule and everything, or do you kind of is it kind of similar with cannabis? So I've been treating them the exact same. I feed and water them when I do these plants, and they live on the same sixteen and eight light cycle. They're the wow. same nutrient, and here's all is full. And this has my reservoir in it, so the aero mixer and everything. So I literally just hand feed him, 
and all these plants came in small. That monstera, like I said, was this small. And this is what it looks like when the leaf falls. Right here. Oh, wow. Yep. So that's a new leaf coming in right there. And um, sometimes they don't like to be overwatered. So that's what you're experiencing here. So these plants are a little bit different in the fact that house plants like to be neglected. So they don't require as much attention as the cannabis plants where these you know you got to be on it you got to defoliate all this these just want to be left the hell alone okay and they're cool huh. with it so if, if you're bad with plants house plants might be a good opportunity for you interesting and then check this out got the canatrol all set up got all yeah. my bud Then um, got all my carts and everything. Look at that shit. I, I love your store, setup. <laughs> I literally store it all. That's awesome. Caregiver, you know caregiver. He actually gave me this stuff. Caregiver I, Nate. Yep. Nice. Yep. I think I got <laughs> some of his stuff too. Yeah, Somewhere. this is. These are this is all um, people from Arizona right here. And then I have, this is the stuff that I harvested, even though it's small, but I used my batch one trimmer the other day, which I don't have it together because the, the blade's being cleaned, but this is the batch one trimmer. And this thing is awesome. It can do five pounds in one hour. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Yep. But yeah, so that's the upstairs. So I wanted to give everybody a quick, you know, follow up as to what I've been up to. And then down here, this can of troll is designed for all my shake for my edibles. So everything that comes off, now I can just keep it. And now when I want to make more edibles or more food or press anything, bam, I got a whole bunch of shit ready to go. That's actually a pretty smart idea. I like that. Yeah, because if not, you, you put it in your, um, you put it in your freezer and then your freezer has five pounds of shake in it, and then your wife yells at you because she wants her freezer, <laughs> stuff, her freezer stuff back, you know? Right. So, yep. So, I'm going to get back down to the lab and roll a joint. And this is your turn, my dude. Let me um, right. just get back to the main screen real quick here. Right. And then I'll, and I'll pull you full. But So, that's what we got so far. And then I'll show you the kitchen real, real quick. So, in my kitchen... This one right here, so these are the four, and those clones upstairs will go in there. So, yeah, and that's the um, Blackbird light from HLG as well. Nice. You know, gotta stay busy. All right, I think I'm gonna start upstairs. I have an outside plant. Give me one second. Get some shoes, it's been raining. All right, one second. All right, so up here I have my Gorilla Glue number four. Let's see. It's been raining today, but here is my Gorilla Glue number four that I have. She went uh, was transplanted from a three gallon to a seven gallon. So we have that one. And then I will take you guys downstairs really quick. And while he's doing that, make sure to roll something up because I'm about to roll a joint here. There's my four by eight. 
Oh, nice. You got the extended dome. Oh, okay. I see what you're talking about. Yeah, mine's at that angle that kind of goes up. Yeah. So I kind of like that because I can kind of raise my lights up a little bit higher. Yeah, a hundred percent. So my plants, my lights are out right now, but they actually come on in like 30 minutes, but I don't mind showing them really quick. Luckily they're autos, so. Oh yeah, they don't give a fuck. Yeah. <laughs> so I've kind of lost track of what is what and where is where. <laughs> Cause I can't see my tags anymore, but, um, I got seven different strains going on in here. These are all in three gallon pots. Um, normally I do five gallon pots, but I wanted to experiment and do three. And so far these are the results and I'm, I'm pretty happy. Yeah. They look pretty happy. <laughs> oh yeah. Especially when that light kicks on and they perk up. Oh boy. They look great. Yeah, that's my favorite part is when those lights come on and they stretch and they're like, yay, it's day again. Right, right. Yeah, so somebody asked that auto out, was that an auto outside as well? Um, no, the one that's outside is a photo. That's Gorilla Glue number four. Oh, fantastic. But yeah, that's my four by eight that I got and then I have my two by four over there and then in between I have you know my little station for my down to earth stuff my whiteboards I like to keep track of stuff I get very weird by keeping everything like organized and then I, en I envy your organization skills I have no <laughs> organization skills and I'm working uh, very desperately on acquiring some Oh, like being a grower, it can be uh, a little crazy. <laughs> so, and then my, I got my little workstation too with my TV and everything. So, I saw Gronomics on the wall. Hey, <laughs> hey. Oh, to make it official. You know what? It's funny you mentioned that. Look. <laughs> hey, dude, that's awesome. That is so cool. That is really cool, dude. Thank you for that. Yeah, yeah. If I had a banner of the Smoke Busters, it'd be right up there with it, even bigger. <laughs> well, that's going to be coming around. I'm going to be making some to hand out to some people that put them on their walls with little, like, you know, like small banners. Not nothing crazy that take up your whole building. But um, yeah, I'll send you one, dude. Oh, yeah. Badass. I'd definitely rock that. That's fucking badass, dude. I'm so glad to see that. That means a lot to me because, you know, I really try hard. You know, to make sure that I'm doing a good job and that, you know, that I'm worth watching and investing your time and energy into. So that really means a lot to me. Yeah, yeah, of course. I definitely uh, stand by what you stand for and everything and what you do. So I think a lot of people don't realize that at first until they get to know you and see what you're doing. Yeah, I, the, the mask can draw different crowds of opinions on based on what I'm here to do. Some some outlandish, some wild, you know. <laughs> I haven't heard that I'm from an alien species yet, but you know, could come <laughs> out. <laughs> right. What are you going to be smoking on? Um, let's see. I think I'm smoking on some first class funk. This is the uh, um, loving in her eyes. I just harvest this, and this is that um that um kaleidoscope eyes Ooh, that sounds exotic oh dude i'm not gonna lie her genetics are pretty spot on like i've been very impressed oh it's a female yeah loving her in her eyes she's a female breeder check her out um really cool and has some fire ass genetics everything that i've seen my friend paul grow from her and a couple other people nothing but bomb and the stuff that i have even though it's small it's it's all powdered white like it's all just crystally and and just trichomes everywhere and really nice dense buds so all right yeah, i have to check her out i always appreciate well, when i see girls doing it well yeah and the one thing you know i'm really trying to do is help the, narr the narrative with women in the cannabis scene because one thing I've talked to is when I talk to female growers 
um, a lot of them feel discredited by males and like, you know, maybe they don't know enough or they're not, their stuff isn't going to be as good and it's bullshit because at the end of the day, dude, it's your love and your passion that you put into this and that's going to yield the results and, you know, give you the quality that you're looking for. And that's open to anybody that's willing to put in the work. You know what I mean? And and to have that out there, you know, that kind of makes us look bad as a community because it's like, then we're just like everybody else, judgmental, just assuming all this dumb shit when we really, and this is what I preach all the time, is we need to get everybody to grow this plant. Everybody needs to be smoking. Everybody needs to be loving on marijuana so we can get what we want, which is that, that peace and freedom with it. You know what I mean? And to, and to do that, we need all hands on deck. You know, there's no in-between. So it's like when you discredit any group of people, whether it's a new grower, whether it's a female grower, whether it's somebody you don't agree with, whatever, it just, it's just a bad look on us. And and we're supposed to be setting the people and really trying to push the narrative of what we're doing. And, and we're going to just hit on each other when we're just trying the best we can. Nobody's an expert, you know? And even if you are, you're still learning, you're still getting educated, you're still talking about improvements and that elevation, so. Yeah, I agree. I feel like uh, if people that are stuck on one way, you're closing yourself off from learning more and and being open like that. Yeah, dude. And that's why I'm doing, um, a woman's takeover on the smoke busters podcast channel it probably be next month and i'm getting a whole bunch of women growers together and i'm not even going to be on it and they're just going to run it for an hour and they're going to spit game i think that's awesome yeah dude cheers Good up that. people if you guys want to come in, in about three minutes, I'm inviting two people. I'll put the link out. Whoever joins um, first, I'd love to see your garden. And I'd love um, for you to join our smoke session. My idea is to really turn my lives into more of a community. So instead of just A to B, we start with an A to B, and then we start bringing people in. Because I really want people to get the notoriety for what they're doing in their own gardens and, and, and get visibility. You know, I think that's the biggest key is getting out there. And when you have Instagram and all these platforms that hate on us, it's like, well, the best thing we can do is self-promote each other. Absolutely. And I think some people are afraid to make that first step to show your face and show what you do. And I just want to say, uh, after you take that first step, it's nothing but uphill from there. So I always encourage people to, if you haven't taken that first step, to go ahead and take that first step and network and get out there and <coughs> know that there's a great community out there that supports what we do. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. And you said it right off the bat. And, you know, even with me, a lot of people think that I hide behind this mask. And, I, and I've asked multiple times for the community to take it off. But the community says that they like it. They like the mystery behind it. But even with me, when I first started growing in here in Virginia, it was illegal. And I grew up in a room um, in my bedroom that has the grow room now that you saw upstairs. And that used to be one four by four with a lock and key on the door. Nobody except me would go in and out of there. Not even Logan, my son. And now it's become one of those things where I promote that I grow. I'm open about it. I don't have to live in this scarcity mode anymore. I got a community of other growers around me to support me and everything changes. So yeah, when you start, you're hundred percent right. When you start putting yourself out there, that's when things start to change. The problem is, especially in a lot of our lives, we don't understand if that's going to be good or bad. Like I was terrified of people knowing that I, grew when i first did it. i thought i was gonna get arrested i thought people were gonna snitch on me and the more and more people i met the more and more people i i found and, and saw that actually really love this plant and and they feel the exact same way that we do about it so um it's just one of those things where evolution is so key and putting yourself out there is is just that one percent half the battle that you overthink day in and day out Hundred percent, and that's one thing I love about your channel too. Is um, you have a great 
you know, background, a great story. We've talked a little bit about my podcast and, you know, your ability to go out there and with what you're dealing with and build that community around yourself. Like when I was in Arizona, totally different vibe. Like, well, um, especially at um, the Secret Gar- Gar- uh, Gar- Garden Shop. Um, when we were out there, dude, in that back room, everybody was pressing dabs, everybody was smoking, you know. It's just like, why isn't this happening everywhere? Right. You just walk in and you know, you know the vibe right away. And I just want to say, uh, if it wasn't for your podcast, I would not have met all those people. So that day I showed up for your podcast, I didn't know not a single person there. I just showed up taking a risk, and now I just met all these amazing people. I love it. Hold on for a second. That's awesome because you would have fooled me because I swore that you knew most of those people. Because the way everybody acted and the way everybody was just interacting, I swear that you guys were all locals and that you guys get together on the, on the regular. I think they did, but that was my first time being there. So that was like a good example of showing like, you know, don't be afraid. Just get out there and do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, that's cool, dude, and I appreciate you coming, you know, to that, because, you know, when I was out there, I didn't know if one person would be at the grocery shop, and there would be 15 people, so one of those things, too, is, you know, we're all in it together, and we're here to support each other, but that event, like I said, it was just one of the coolest things, because that's even, like I said, that's mind-blowing to me, because I just I swore that everybody knew everybody, <laughs> like, everybody was, like, close-knit. Yeah, but that just shows you right there what this plant does. It brings amazing people together. No, I definitely, definitely agree. Guys, I put the link out in chat. It's one, one to two people want to join on. Show us your grow. Chat up. Smoke it up with us. Creative, why don't you get on? I mean, yeah, let's get creative on, right here. Fallen, you have a good grow. You've been on here before. Psalm, you guys are my regular. <laughs> Umbrella, you more than welcome to. Florida Man Jack, he's actually a giveaway winner. He won a couple giveaways. Oh, Florida Man did? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's an awesome guy. Badass. Yeah, I see him on the chats a lot. Yeah, that's one thing I've learned about this community is, like, you you start to get to, like, know people a little bit, and you get used to seeing their names and their faces come into your feed. So it's just cool because, like, at first they're, like, just names, right? And then you get to know them, and then all of a sudden you're, like, you're friends with them, and you're in and out. So it's just cool. It uh, grows yeah. It grows on you. Hey, what's up? <laughs> hey, dude. How you guys doing? I got the Arizona boys with me. <laughs> yeah. The boys are back in town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just turn my camera around. Yeah. My the plants. Look. Show it off. What's that? I said, let's my see that girl. Yeah. yeah, my plants look dead. Let's see. Are you telling me if they look dead? Seven five so seven. Got, dude, dang, those don't look dead. <laughs> yeah, we got don't look dead. God snow damn. number one, and then snow plot number two, and then over here we got the wrench under the umbrella trellises and Josh. Umbrella trellis. Oh. But this is snow plot right here. This is that rosin that you tried that you said was real good. This is that plant. Oh yeah. Mm. Here you go. You're now, good. Are, that, are those four by four squares or what size squares are those? This six. Oh, or six by six. Yeah, whatever they are, the normal size. And then are you running four plants? How many plants total? Yeah, this is twelve. Twelve total. It's four underneath each light. That's so great. there's the, yeah, they start here. Well, yeah, I get the spread. Uh, I put three plants in here, one plant, two plant, three plant, and I got the same amount of density. Uh, it's just plant training, you know, and I've grown these plants quite a few times, so it's not very difficult for me to 
Uh, oh, so those are all clones, so you know exactly. Oh, yeah. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. Look at you. Yeah, but definitely. But uh, that's that. And then uh, these aren't clones over here, though. These are uh, <coughs> kind of a, a hunt through some more seeds. I've hunted through the wrench quite a few times. This is uh, my fourth time hunting through seeds. So I have four of them right here. It's pretty neat to be able to pull them out like this with the umbrella trellis because I had this bottom piece right here that I used to train with, right? And then uh, they'll be growing through pretty much all the way. That is awesome. So do you have, so this is in your house or do you have like a little facility? Yep. No, this is my house. Now, do you have a veg area where you're keeping all your clones and then you do just a flower room or how's that work? Well, yeah, not here though, but yeah, I have a bunch of grow stuff. I got uh, multiple spaces that I grow in. I have a mother program, uh, but we have a plant count here, so uh, everything is kind of separate. You know, I'm turning my camera around. Dude, that is awesome! What a beautiful garden. When you said your plants are kind of dead, I was expecting like a two by two <laughs> tent. <laughs> And like the plants are like like all like you know straggling out, you know. And you're like, oh, <laughs> like that. When he said that, when he said that, I knew he was bullshit right away. <laughs> no, I usually do pretty well. Um, but I've been doing that same grow back to back for a while. Uh, I f look, you can see where I flooded up here one time with the RL system. Let's see yeah, right here. Doing because you just love that strain or is there like a certain like type of outcome that you're looking for you are you looking to make seed like f2 it three four or no i do look yeah i do breeding projects um snowplow is one of my plants and uh i uh, do a lot of testing like i'm like pretty much kind of like a, a breeder but i don't have any genetics out and i've been breeding for about three years now uh, everything I do is about breeding and building brands. So all of my garden, the byproduct of my garden is having flower, but the whole goal, everything is to build a brand and to have the best flower and to have the best projects, breeding projects I can possibly muster. So when I keep growing snowplow like that, it's because it's the best of what I got and it's really good. And I need to have it to represent to people and uh, show people that way, uh, when the time comes when we're craft, then I'll have people that can help uh, me uh, 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 take people, uh, people. People take me more seriously. You know what I mean? Because people have already had the experience. Dude, that is awesome. What a what a setup. You know, um, Virginia, we have plant count too, so you know <laughs> we got to be careful. But you know, that's just the thing. Is like. I just love seeing that and um, the fact that, you know, you're a breeder, but, you know, you're doing a lot of, like, side projects, really learning that plant. I don't think, I personally have never taken the time to, like, clone and clone and clone and clone, at least for even, like, six months, you know, doing the same plant. Usually, I, I like to try flavors and either I'm getting clones from other people or whatever. But, you know, to really understand the plant and, like, its consistency, how the plant reacts, and then each time you know your numbers, you know what the, you know what you should be doing. You know, I think this must bring a lot of clarity, you know, to grow them because I think a lot of times yeah, you know, yeah. with the plants, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. And, and that's why I always teach the power, you know, and I have the clone class about cloning and the value that you can have the same plant. And it's like, guess what? You harvest it, and now seven weeks later, and like a you know, a repetitious grow, you have the exact same harvest, the exact same harvest, the exact same harvest. And with you, you know, with the, like trying to stay consistency and then like ha define a flavor or a profile, that's just huge, dude. So kudos to you for um, for smoking the same shit. <laughs> hey, look, I discovered <laughs> what what happened is what happened is that I discovered. Uh, I planted some seeds from Irish Genetics called the Machine, and one of the phenos is so desirable for me. I smoke it every day since the day that I discovered it. So all my uh, projects have the Machine in it, and 
uh, they will always have some kind of machine in it probably over time because of how good it is. And uh, it just really blew me away at how good it is. So it has 27% THC. It presses uh, in a in a 120 micron screen, uh, 25% and fresh rosin uh, under 170 degrees too, not even the 200 degree mark. Uh, so I could probably squeeze more out of it. But uh, it's just really special plant and it changed my whole idea about weed and i used to want a bunch of different stuff if i went to go get a bag from somebody i only want to smoke it for like a week and i'm ready for a new flavor and then i discovered something that hit me made me feel super happy and it connected with me in a way that uh i didn't i didn't know i was looking for and then i found that there's stuff that makes me feel that way so then i have these other plants that make me feel the same way too and uh they're all they're all good i think i'm just having fun you know I enjoy growing. I just enjoy all of it. So that's all it is. <laughs> no, dude, that's awesome. And, and same here. You know, I just, no, I will get, I won't, I'm not going to lie. Sometimes it's kind of a pain in the ass. Because it's like, sometimes you're like really tired from the day. And you're like, fuck, I got to go to the car. Because if I don't do it today, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Type attitude. But I definitely agree with you. I'm just, my big thing is, I just love when you have a really good grow. And then every day you come back to the garden and it looks different. So it's like I go to my tent today and things just look bigger and things just look different. And you know things are happening. And, you know, either you're going in the flower or you're building out your trellis. And, you know, and that's another thing. People watching, you know, look, that was a six by six spread. And then with that plant, what's your average yield in just that room alone with what you have going on that you can kind of guesstimate now? Oh, that's super low. You said it's low. Like I don't, I don't. Yeah, I don't grow for, like I. So you notice my training's on point. Like I got as many colas as yeah, you're gonna yeah. get in that space, for the time. But uh, the plants don't. Uh, these plants don't yield well. Uh, the machine yields, uh, pretty good. The machine can yield probably like two and a half, three pounds under a light. So in total, underneath both big lights, you can get about five. Uh, pushing six pounds with the machine only. And I've done that many times. I ran the machine a solid year, room after room after room after room, back to back with them lights, and I was able to get really good numbers. But then snowplow is significantly less. If I was just growing snowplow number two under one light, I would probably get about a pound and a half. If I was growing snowplow number one underneath, I would probably get close to two pounds maybe. Like, and that's push it. That's the best you can do. That's without CO2. I don't run CO2, by the way. But uh, I have another Fino snowplow that is in the works right now, and I'll see how that works. So then I'll be running all three of them together. And uh, it's, I don't know. They don't yield well, but they're more desirable to me than other weeds. So I, I grow what is most desirable to smoke 100%. <laughs> that's awesome. Because I got, I got strawberry cough. I got grape ape. I have the actual strawberry cough from Kyle Cushman. He gave it to me. I got grape ape. He gave me that. Starberry cough gave me that. I have apple fritter. I got high octane OG. I got a, a handful of cuts uh, that I could be growing like that, but they're not as desirable to me. The smoke. Well, That's you know, all it is. I think, too, is also the smaller plants. Like, I've had, like, autos that were, like, really small that didn't really yield, like, a whole lot. But they were super flavorful and super like concentrated with crystals. Because sometimes you get that dilution. What about you, Gronomics? Do you see yeah. it too? And what about you in your garden? Yeah, I've actually experienced the same. I've had uh, lower yields, but the quality was amazing. But I've also had a combination of both as well. So definitely. Yeah, there so, are some really elite cultivars out there, huh? Yeah. Yeah. That was another thing I wanted to point out about you, Creative. You said you've been breeding for three years, but you don't have like a, you know your own strains and everything. But it's because you're sitting there to take the time to really get what you want and you know get that strain perfect. So I just want to point that out that that's an awesome thing instead of just being like a normal breeder or other breeders where they just jump on getting a thousand seeds and then just trying to get them out there. You're taking the time to actually sit there and phenol profile mm -hmm. everything out like perfectly and get the best of what you need. And I think that's unique. And I test the plants that I like, like Snowplow. And I have another one called the Daily Grind. 
and I have another one called the Daily Driver. I have a couple different things, right? And I test them against all the flour that I ever try to try to make sure that I'm, I actually have what I like the most. And if I can't, if I don't have what I like the most, I'm not going to mess with it. So it's when I keep growing it over and over and over again, it's because I'm always very interested to see if I still like it every time and if other people still like it just as much every time. And that's just really the important thing to me. So then you may not like growing it though. You may not, it might be like, I don't like growing that plant. That plant don't yield enough to me. It gets too tall, all these things, but I'll grow it. Don't even worry about it. I'll take care of it. So that's how I look at it. What are you rolling a big old hog, bro? Look at this. You should have had yourself blowed up for that one. Yeah, so what it is is uh, I went to Boston, the the event, and uh, they have – on me put it on me. They have these ceramic tips. So it comes in a kit. So the kit comes with the tube, a little cap, and then has a little cap for, like, the little um, ceramic tip. But um, it comes like this, right, And it, as a pre-roll. And then you would smoke it. But – most people would throw it out. But what I did is I kept the tip, and then they give you this. And when you put the two together, you can roll the cone. So you roll the cone, and then you load your joint. And then I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, but if you look inside, see how it's all graded? So it has perfect airflow. Um, so this way, when you're smoking, you don't deal with clogs and you can have a fully loaded one gram joint and it smokes wonderfully. I have not had any canoeing issues and it's nice. And all you do is just roll it. And then you, I just put it back in the tube and I just carry it with me. And then I just carry the, any type of rolling paper would work. I'm using zigzags. I know away from my beloved raw, it's just cause I'm out and I had to use what I have collected at events or else I would have raw rolling papers. But um, you just roll it up and then you pack it and then you can use the cone right here as a way to like, you know, um, stiffen it up by packing it down and everything and twist the tip and you're good to go. Nice. I just made my germination room bigger. I'm trying to do a belt line style grow that way I constantly harvesting. It's hard to do, but after dialed in, it's rocking. Hell yeah. And then somebody else said, doing it the right, somebody said, you're doing it the right way, creative. Not a lot of breeders are doing it like you. And then um, we have, I have a 10 by 10 bedroom and the same on the flower room. Plus I'm fixing to build a 20 by 20. Damn kid. I wish wow. Virginia was like that. Definitely. So, yeah, I'm not, uh, yeah. go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just saying, maybe, maybe the reason why I am the way I am is because I'm not trying to make no money. I'm not trying to make a product for sale. Like, I want to make stuff to share, and I share stuff that I like, and I'm just interested in good stuff. So, I probably never sell any genetics, I'd probably only give them out. Uh, you know, and I might want to keep it that way, I might change it up, but it's, I don't think it's for me about the money and all it's kind of about having fun with it and uh you know this, this, this would be my advice i think that if you're going to go to a market where you're investing your time your energy your knowledge i'm going to get back to three screens so we saw this i definitely think that okay uh my my business coach tells me this all the time he says the most generous thing you can do to somebody that you really appreciate is pay them for their service or their time, right? So therefore, you know, obviously the vision, and I'm not in the, in the position to try to, you know, make money off the community either, but at the same time, money does allow you to further your genetics, your resources, your growing styles, the people that you do, you know, genetic work with. And it allows you to give you that resource because now let's say, hey, you uh, you made some money off your genetics and now you get to go to another country and now you're bringing your kinetic genetics like Brazil or something. 
and now you're now you're working on a Brazilian cross, and now that's going to make the community happy because that's something totally different that's being brought in. So therefore, money should not be looked at as like uh, like a capital gains. It needs to be looked at as a tool, as a resource. You want to do no, I did it. The rest of your life. Hey. So somebody's going to have to pay you so you can live to do genetics, you know? Yep. So I'm going to spill the beans because I like, because I think you get given information in your brain for you to share it. And if you don't share it, you won't get it no more. So then like, I don't have any ideas that I would ever not share. So one of my ideas to make money, right, is instead of selling genetics, what if I just build a brand and then someone wanted to associate themselves with my brand with marketing and then they'll pay me to just give my shit away and they and I market their brand through my brand. So maybe I have a one plant specifically that's really hot and everyone likes. And then I'm like, okay, I'm gonna make clones available. And this company is gonna pay for all these clones to go out to people when I want them to go out. And I'm gonna put their company logo name on the box and I'm gonna give out stuff from their company. And they're gonna pay me every bag that goes out. Instead of the consumer, maybe I can continue to have free stuff and just some, I do advertising deals with brands like, that I appreciate, that I like, you know? Yeah. no, and that's I like just, advertising money. Ever since I've messed with you, I've already been on that, but I'm like really into sales and everything. And I really love like drop shipping too. It's fun. But like uh, sales and getting marketing money, I really like the, the sound of that and the feel of marketing money over having a traditional product and sales because I'm a content creator. So if I can build a brand as a content creator, then I think marketing funds uh, is a good way to make money, maybe. But I don't know much about it, though. What do you think? I think it's a great idea. And I think, too, you know, one of these things that you you need to do is you define where you want to be and how you want to be in the space, especially with what you're trying to do. And especially with genetics, you know, right, like a strategic partnership like that is an excellent idea because then it also takes away the traditional market of having to sell to individuals and now you could work on a distribution deal, you know, a huge chain. Yeah, marketing. Instead of, you know, you sell into a whole bunch of growers online, you sell to a massive retailer who will buy 5 million seats from you and then put and then help you get them into the banks or help you, you know, co-brand or collaborate a white label or whatever it is that you plan on doing. <clears throat> But that's the traditional way because everybody in here is like, oh, well, you know, I just want to sell weed and everybody sells weed. The yeah, idea that's... of it is, is how do you make a, uh, uh, an income that's one, reoccurring and two, drives value and then, you know, generates leads or information or things that can that help support other businesses or influencers and stuff like that. To generate a monetized income that allows you to do what you want to do where it's not always my investment my money my time to make these things happen you know quinn tarantino um has a quote that says um it is not your job in life to figure out uh, or it's not your job in life to be great and do everything by yourself your job is to figure out how to be great and then find a bunch of talented people in the community, get them to see your idea and have them help you carry your idea out. Because when I say that it takes a village in business and in marketing and in branding and all this, it really does. And I can honestly say even in my team, I have a team of four people that help run Madman Plant. You know, my wife, uh, my business developer, and then we have Danny, who's the same, and then he's also our logistics guy. And without them, it wouldn't run nearly as smooth. So your community is everything, but your community is also going to help push you forward and give you the credibility, the visibility, and the, you know the time to allow you to really share what it is that you want with the world. So I definitely think your idea is great. And what I would do is, you know, there are, you don't, there's a thing called intellectual property and you want to take that into consideration with your ideas. I know you want to share everything, but until it works for you, 
some things aren't designed to be shared until they're already either happening or already in place because the thing is a lot of times outside energy whether it's good or bad can alter alter what you're trying to do so what i would first do in my opinion for you is start having conversations with those people who you think your deal or collaboration effort would benefit and how it would benefit them and create like a business plan or like an, a model of this is how it worked. This is what you would get out of it. This is how you would monetize. This is how I monetize. So this way, when you go to them, especially when you go to somebody for, you know, financials, you have an outline of how this works for them, because that's what they're going to care about in the, in the oh, beginning yeah. is how does this work for me? And when you can yep. answer that question, you'll be set. But the biggest thing right now is going to trusted individuals that you know and starting that conversation because they'll also help you create ideas as well to execute your plan. Nope. <laughs> That's good. Definitely. Yeah, I like a bland, brand collaborations with the right people like i know a lot of people i'm very optimistic person in all situations it's basically not a nothing i'm ever gonna think that it is gonna go wrong i always think it's always gonna go right and it doesn't matter if it goes wrong it doesn't really fuck with me either like because I, I don't know it i like doing things for the sake of the thing i'm doing it so then the, i don't really feel the failure of it i'm like doing it so it doesn't really matter if i'm failing at it or not <laughs> It's because I'm doing it, you know, so that's what's cool about it is trying to get into talking to people is uh, I think that's pretty easy for me to mm -hmm. talk to people like I'm real good at talking to people personally too, like one on one and approaching them because of the podcast has helped me a lot in that area with uh, human relations. When I have to get people on the podcast, I have to prep them. I have to deal with them ahead of time, kind of hold their hand sometimes all the way to the podcast. It's just really easy to get people to work with you. Well, that's a great benefit to have for if you do, you know, go further on in the future. Things do go. Oh, you're, you know. And then you, you got like uh, your edits and stuff. I was surprised when I seen your first edit uh, from the joint <laughs> sesh. You, I was like, oh, yeah, I was, I was like, dang, I gotta make an edit. This fucker just made a really good edit. <laughs> this is bullshit. Excuse my language. I, I love it. I was like, dang. I, I, I wish I had the right tools as far as like a better camera and everything. And I think soon I will in invest in that because I, there's something about editing that's very addicting to me that I love. Bro, get you the newest iPhone or the newest Samsung ultra 24 and you will yes. have a heyday with editing. It will change the game for you. They are way better at editing than even the year ago phone. I had the 22 ultra. Now I got the 24 ultra. It's a huge difference in editing, big difference. Like it's way smoother. So if awesome. you're fucking with the phone, yeah, and I'll put. And you then on he's the editing king right here, Madman Point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'll put you onto some sites. DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut yeah. are both yeah. free, and they're really good softwares. A lot of professionals yeah, right for DaVinci. Now I use Premiere Pro, but uh, the biggest thing too, and remember this, Gronomics, um, as somebody that's owned a production company for the last twenty years now. Uh, I've never been asked what type of camera I use. Most people are interested in two things. The story, which is number one, and then two, the creative ability behind it. There's a movie that had an $800 budget that won an Oscar. And it had an $800 budget for the entire movie and was shot on a very basic camera. That I would focus on more instead of just the camera. Obviously, that'll come in time. But your story and how you can edit because it does not matter what you shoot with when you're an editor you can make magic with trash you know what i mean so that's what i rely on is more of what's in here and that creative ability versus the physical item that you think will make you better because i just i just upgraded all my camera systems last year I spent about almost forty thousand dollars on gear and you think that's a lot it's really two camera bodies a bunch of lenses and one rig that builds out one of the cameras and that's it so it's not really a, a whole lot 
still to this day, if you look at all the videos that I've shot prior, you can't tell the difference. What's different is the, obviously the autofocus technology and how the camera works. It's also a full frame versus a micro four thirds, so way bigger sensor. One's 6K, one's only 4K. You know, so there's some differences. But to the average human who doesn't know anything, it's, it's in here and in here that's going to take you further in your editing game than any piece of technology will. And that's something that I have to remind myself of because I'm always wanting bigger and better cameras. And I'm like, if I only had this and everything, but it's not about that. It's about heart. And both of you guys have that in your own thing when it comes to creativity and media, when it comes to growing and breeding, you know, it, it starts here. And then that's what allows the magic. That's why, literally, it's why it's called smoke and mirrors. You know, it's AZ literally. pulling up. Sorry. Hey, we got a bunch of kind. AZ guys pulling up. Rare kind, you should join us real quick. Hey, we got rare kind. We got Arizona Stoner brand. Uh, Fallen Angel. Cap Cut Pro, another great one. I use that on my phone as well. That is super good. And they have pre built templates. So this way you just get those fire ass clips, plug and play, and bam, you know. So. I, use, I use Power Director. Power Director. I'll, yeah, on my phone and my computer. It's really comprehensive. It's almost as comprehensive as Premiere Pro. It has all the special audio and video tricks in it. Or a lot of them at least. Not as many as Premiere Pro, obviously. That's like the best. But uh I I'll have to check those out. Uh oh, uh oh, we have a troublemaker. <laughs> hey, we're kind of so. I know. It's like this is an Arizona group only. <laughs> Arizona, yeah, we got a a Z in the house. <laughs> hey, look, A Z. It's about time A Z. Uh, you know, starts connecting more and more because our state's really been overshadowed by California for a long time. Cali's been so big, you know. Man, Cali's been. Now so big on the map. Texas from California. Yeah, What's that's up? Where I'm originally Neil, Shaquille O'Neal just moved to Texas. Elon Musk lives in Texas. A uh, whole bunch of people. It's actually, you know, you know, it's actually pretty cool because, like, for like a three thousand square foot home that you would pay probably like two million dollars for where I live, you can get for like three hundred thousand. Four hundred thousand, yeah. and it's, it's fucking huge. So, mm, rare yeah, time. What's new, dude? No, man, just trying to grind the daily grind. Basically, that's what I've been up yeah. to. How's the wife and everybody? What do you guys do for Easter? Um, right now we're gonna go to my mom's house. We had the kids go up, you know, look for Easter eggs and do all the little fun stuff, and they were well, blessed with their nice. Easter baskets. You know what I mean? <laughs> so yeah we had a good time kids had a good time you know now we're gonna go take it to my mom's here in about an hour or so oh hell yeah dude you want to show off your garden real quick show us what you got the only thing i have right now is my bed. my flower is in lights off right now so six two more hours yeah i'd say the same bed. thing if i had spider mites I'm kidding. I know, right? <laughs> I feel like I gotta go into a dark room right now. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah what are lights do you under right now? I forgot what lights you had. <laughs> must not hurt me. Wait, you hear me? I'm on my bed right now, so. See, switch this around. Rare kind. What's up? Question. Yeah, what, what lights are you underneath? My lights? Um, I flower. have uh, in my flower right now. I have an FC six six thousand five hundred uh, hydro farmer, and then on the other side I have four uh, T TS one thousand or TS two thousand, whatever. They're like one hundred fifty watts, like six hundred watts on that one side. So yeah, that's what I'm currently doing right now. Despicable devs. Yeah, Switch this camera around. Get a little yeah, I need to get one. Look, they both got these hats. I need to get one of these. Make Arizona stoned again. 
Oh, where'd he go? We lost oh, he, a rare <laughs> He said, he said, he said, ha ha. So, who out there, who out there wears these? <laughs> my bad. I'm trying to switch my camera around and I don't, it's not doing a good job. See what happens when you get stoned again? <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to switch my camera around, but, but you know. This is under a TS, uh, a fluorescent. Nice. Oh, I got it. Going. I can't. I don't know. It's hard to see. Okay. Give us the parameters. Is this a what type of tent? It's a four by four, uh, Vivo Sun, uh, tent basically, running on our uh, T two fluorescents. And then I just got some, just on my genetics right here. I don't know, some purple milk, uh, laser fuel, some jelly donuts, uh, okay. some blueberry okay. muffin. Yeah, so quite a bit things, quite a few things going on. Bunch of good stuff. Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah, hey, that. Hell yeah. Oh, your are you growing right now? Your lights came on. Let's see what the lights are. <laughs> All right, hold on. Oh, he has lights on. Yeah, the, when he we got on, his lights were still off. <laughs> he caught he caught me with the lights on. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "Man, I hope my plants look good right now." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, they're gonna look dope. Like after nah, he has a good garden. Go he definitely has a good garden. Oh hell yeah, dude! Look at them. Oh, look at that. They're all like, yeah, why? Yeah. These are autos. These are autos too, right? Yeah, all autos. Didn't, that's crazy. Dude. How many that's weeks? Nice. Oh, look at that fade. Let me get you full screen here. Stay there, stay there. Right there you go. Hey, if you turn your phone uh, sideways, you'll get full screen. I tried that the other night on um, the homegrown community, and it wouldn't work for me for some reason. Oh, well. That <laughs> icon, bro. Looks good, though. Yeah. Oh, everything looks yeah. really healthy. All your leaves are real flat. No, no, uh, like, tip curling or nothing. Like, the fade looks real good. Uh, yeah, it's so totally full in there. This one was a low yield. I topped it. I was just doing whatever with this plant, and it ended up turning out super fucking good like we were talking about earlier yeah it looks pretty super pretty yeah i wish i wish i would have just let that one bush out but it's okay this is what it is when you're growing autos sometimes at least you got the whole thing filled out every now and then yeah. you'll see someone growing some autos they'll have like two autos in that whole thing that's right. me man i don't do autos it's too hard for me oh he's killing the auto game you better ask him what to do then <laughs> yeah, definitely. Oh, he is definitely killing it. No, I, I know what I did. It's just, man, auto thing for me though. That's all I gotta say. I've done autos in the past, not not like that big, but the last round, I, see, I started with autos first because I thought they were easier, and then I went to photo period, <laughs> and then I tried going back to autos, and I sucked at autos, and cause I, I all my autos have gotten this tall lately. And go on the flower, and I'm like, son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah, I, I I feel like autos are the go-to thing for beginners too, and I think a lot of people think that they're easy, but because they're, you know, they're on timers and they're temperamental, you know, they don't they're not like photos where they can bounce back right away. So I think uh, that's what makes it difficult sometimes for a beginner grower, um, in my opinion. No, I think you're right on that. But so I've only grown one auto, and I was very successful with it, but it wasn't supposed to be an auto. It was uh, vanilla frosting from Humboldt Seed Company, and uh, the only female I had out of all the seeds that uh, didn't uh, uh, show instability with sexual stability um, was an auto flower. It just automatically flipped, but it was fire, dude. It was hella good. I liked it. Um, it was an auto flower. Yeah, it just turned into an auto. <laughs> First time experience for that. My bad. <laughs> Don't miss out on the excitement at madmanplant.com.
Have you jumped into our giveaways yet? This is your chance to score some amazing prizes. Join the vibrant Madman Plant community. That's I figured right. I'd go ahead and read that. Hey, thank you. I couldn't read that. <laughs> I got see. I got a whole bunch of ones. Like um, it was a good one. I had to read it. This one. I can read it like a commentator too. At Madman Plant, we believe in the transformative power of knowledge for home growers. Our goal is to equip you with tools, resources, and equipment or expert advice to help your cannabis plants thrive. <laughs> we believe in healing power of cannabis, not just for the body, but also for the mind. Our educational content is crafted to promote mental wellness and provide a safe space. <laughs> Who's next? Who's next? <laughs> oh. Yeah, I like doing Read along with Creator today. Yeah. Hey, bro. Story I'll time. Put a little, I'll put a little energy in it. There you go. I like reading, though. I, I enjoy reading a lot. So. Here's what it is. I have a love hate with reading some days. I like it. Man, I love it. <laughs> I love it. Like I, I even like. Uh, I was reading. I saw I got on Chat GTP four, and I was trying to do. I was asking it to do like puzzles with me, and and do like hard things to try to figure out. And it was doing tongue twisters with me. And if you can read them to read them real fast, it's very very difficult. And I was like, it was fun for me to try to read them super fast for no reason. Just like damn, I love reading for no reason. It's like doing people who like math. They enjoy it. I enjoy reading. Like. Like the math people like math. Damn. Yeah, I'm, I, I don't have the patience to read. I'm like, is there a movie or a video on it? <laughs> like an audio book? Uh, <laughs> it says, is it true that audios yield more if they're in <laughs> smaller pots? Now, from my understanding with Ruderalis and everything, once that taproot hits the bottom, it's going to activate the flowering process. So I would start your autos, I always started in uh, five gallons and then I did transplant during flower into a seven gallon. But the rule I've always been taught is you should start your auto flowers in the pot that you plan to finish them in. So if your goal is a five gallon pot, start them in a five gallon yes. because of that. I agree. <clears throat> and you guys can jump in and add anything you guys want to. Hey, I'm not a Rudal Alice fan. I don't know too much about it. I'm barely learning about them at work. We are growing right now like 800 of them. And so far, so good, but I'm not a big I'm fan. Not. Yeah, I, I agree. I definitely would start them in a five gallon, if anything. I would say you can do them in a three gallon because that's what I'm doing, but I think ideal would be five. Okay. I yeah, we're doing them a 50 gallon, oh, no. actually. And they're like three feet tall. The Spiegel says I transplanted my autos four times. Wow. It's interesting. Um, so not all plants are created equal though, right? Like what? some autos might be super vigorous and very uh, robust in their uh, what they can handle. So some, some people just get good genetics. I've noticed that. Like they do whatever they want to the auto it grows. But then I've noticed other people, they get some autos and it's like they, they don't even care about growing. Yeah, and if I freaking transplant four times, I feel like they're not going to grow. I got like little baby plants, like maybe <clears throat> six inches high. I don't know how you do it I've, four times. Four, I've personally never seen anybody transplanted it four times. I'm not saying that's uh, impossible or anything, but I just feel like you're at risk with um, upsetting the plant <clears throat> during those transplant just because the autos are on, are on such a short timer before they even hit flower. So I feel like it's, you? you're kind of at a risk with, with messing with that. Okay, Despicable so though, he's a pro. He grows. He's, if you've seen his gardens, he's no, really, he's definitely really good a pro. So he's okay. saying that he goes from the solo to a half gallon to a one gallon, and then to three or five gallons. Oh, how, okay. how much time in between each one? That's exactly it, what I was typing in right there. How much time in between? Yeah, no, this is awesome. <laughs> and if you want to jump on real quick and share that, um, the link's still there. I can grab you in here. Yeah, because I would love to learn about this because that's very I'm interesting. Intrigued. Yeah, he's big into the concentrate gang, too. He does a lot of extraction stuff. 
rosin okay. and everything. Well, the way he the way he just named his lineup right there is very interesting. Wow. Okay. I use the pots with velcros. Oh yeah, that makes it easy, huh? I guess so it'll get to just... bottom out at that time. Yeah. Either Velcro. Oh boy. Okay. Yeah, the positive Velcro would make it a little bit, you know, easier to transplant. But what I always do too is, uh, if you if you water it and then you let it squeeze in, sometimes the pot will just pop right off. Yep. I'm about to take a big time. Dude, do it. Big boy, dab time. This thing's steaming out the top. We're all gonna watch you die. Blinker, blinker. <laughs> I'm flying a one gallon feeding heavy test. Yeah, I did I was doing one gallon pods. Uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, boy, at least you have dabs to do that. I'm out of dabs right now. That's because I did uh, no, dabs don't last with me. I get very greedy. I love that. <laughs> oh my <Dude>. god. <laughs> yeah, that was full blown. There he is. Yeah, that was oh, full blown. Right there. What's up, fellas? What's up, man? Hey, thanks for having us. Thank you with us. Oh, absolutely, bro. No problem, man. So, yeah, I, um, I'm i wanting to break rules. Where's my best buddy? told me you can't do shit. So I, I tried it for the first time on my first girl. I learned on autos. Um, and then I just kept going with it. But yeah, now I do. So I watch my roots because I have Velcro pots where I can open it and I can see. Um, so once the roots start getting like halfway down the side, I know that the ones on the in the middle are close to hitting that bottom. Um, I've never missed one yet where it has hit the bottom and went nice. in the flower. But my leaf yield in auto was six ounces and I think 18 grams. My highest wow. was nine ounces and 22. Wow. That's crazy. This is auto? Yeah, these are autos, yeah. Wow. Hey, That's Cincy Seeker, too. Cincy Seeker has yes, numbers Cincy. like that, too, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And where, hold on. Where, where are you getting your autos from? So I've done Fast Buds. I've done Atlas. Um, Right now, I'm running uh, Boondocks Blue by Zaza Genetics. And, okay. Um, then I got, what else do I got? Uh, Berry Genetics from Connecticut. Uh, he, oh, hold on, I didn't my TV. You guys are on the TV and my phone. Um, so it was, sorry. It's, it's all about timing with it, I think. They say, hey, it's bro science. Uh, it just flowers when it wants. It, that has nothing to do with that hitting the floor or whatnot. But I believe it, it absolutely does. Like um, here, I can show you what I have in my auto flower tent right now. So you see, I top my autos. I I do everything they tell you not to. I've chopped autos in the past before, so I know that that can or cannot work. One thing I did with the autos myself is I did a lot of training, and that's where I really learned how to st low stress train. But I agree uh, with you that that topping autos isn't um, isn't going to make or break your plant. Damn, those are nice. Can you turn your screen or turn your phone? That's an hell yeah, good looking up. Nice. Okay, that's an auto. Yeah, that's, these are all three autos right here. Wow. <laughs> this yeah, one right here. This one right here is going to be, I think, my best yielding auto flower ever. Well, mm -hmm. What people don't realize is autos will grow just as tall as a regular cannabis plant, especially outside, like six, seven feet. No oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, I've seen some that were huge. Yeah. And they, they trike up really well. I don't know if my camera's focusing, but... Wow. He still got like a week and a half. And that one has like a couple days left. But yeah. I just go against the grain. Like I even I even did this, like you see this this right here? I did this mid flower. 
They tell oh, you, oh, H at high stress training. Power. Yeah, look. That's, look that's many, incredible. How many tops you got. Yep, I seen that video wow. when you pinched it wow. and you laid it yeah. over and it was already growing little hairs the next on it. Day, the next day it was back up chilling. So, yeah, it's all about like experience, you know, just learning. Take the, the risks sometimes. And, you know, sometimes you might take a little bit of losses hey, too. Like, the Reeboks are killing it too. You're killing the game in the Reeboks. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Very, <laughs> very impressive. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. This is my photo. Yeah. This is my first photo run. Oh. Oh, yeah. Wow. What light you got in there? Uh, that's the kind LED 7X50. Oh, man, that's a nice light. With Jeez. the UBIR dialer. Uh, next light, my, I actually have a Grandmaster Rebels light coming in. Right now. Oh, that's <laughs> even better. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so it, yeah, it's all about like taking the risks and learning from them, I guess, you know? Um, well, but, if you're not breaking stems, if you're not trying things, if you're not killing plants, are you even really gardening and having fun, you know? Right. R and yeah. yeah. D. Super impressive. Thank oh, you. I'm very yeah. impressed. Yeah, by the way. And thanks so much for coming on and sharing that because, you know, sometimes when people say that, you know, you just you don't People know. Don't believe you know it, yeah. it. Well, not even they don't believe you. It's just nobody's done that before. I've never heard anybody like transplant that many times, and then you know to have you come on and share it. It's just awesome because now it's more education that the community can use as far as growing methods. Yeah, we got a great right, community, right, right. and they're very resilient. Like here, yeah. Look what this girl did. You see that? That's oh, crazy. So she literally. That's exactly Wait, how that? I had her on two hanger, uh, two staples here on these two yeah. that are going across, and she just said fuck that and broke herself out and split herself in half at uh, week three of bed actually, and she recovered no tape. I didn't put anything. I didn't even notice it until I um, started cutting the bottoms off. I'm like, what the hell? And she was already healed up. So they're very resilient, you know. Highly resilient. Uh, uh, so I tell everybody they're not these like rare Japanese roses, you know. You can cut the head off the plant and break it in half and it'll still grow. Right. Yeah. It's amazing, you know, what they do and Yeah, they they're grow. resilient. That's they crazy. Come far away for sure, too. And like these the, the these are on twelve twelve right now too, because I didn't want to tank the photo tent. And they're at a thousand PPFD. Oh, wow, okay. Oh, wow. So I just matched the, the DLI uh, to their 18.6, uh, what they oh, were no. getting. And, yeah, they're doing fine. I did see a little bit of tip burn on them. They did pull. So I, I dropped it. I, I, <laughs> I went up to 11, actually, on accident. Wow. Um, and realized it, like, three days later. But, yeah, they recovered really well. Yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful auto grow. That's one of the best looking ones I've seen, honestly. Oh yeah, thanks, bud. Thanks. Definitely. You I guys, agree. I don't even know. You guys changed my whole freaking brain about autos. Yep. <laughs> yeah, a lot of, yeah, a lot of people underestimate them, and they, I guess they used to be trash. No, they um, did. Not, yeah, I guess they were. Because I remember I grew them. Way. They were centimeters big. I mean, like. Inches big, if anything. I was getting like a good eighth to a quarter off of them, and that was it. And now I'm doing them again. They're three foot. They're a little bit better. Just I don't know. I, I love my photos, man. I love my photos. Yeah. So my last photos. Five fast bud Tropicana cookies in the five by five, and I pulled out two and a half pounds. Mm, nice. Oh, autos. <laughs> mm. I pressed the shit out of most of it though, but I went press happy. I pressed everything in the house except the kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, THC yeah. comes from that. Right, I like washing too. So that's yeah, I'm now I'm going into the new love for bubble hash and washing. Yeah, and if any of you guys got a press and a can of trove. Uh, yeah. Definitely up your uh, dew point a little bit before you're gonna press it. Um, you'll see 
crazy yeah. amount of hey. percent yields. I'm so glad that. you said that. You you if you have you need to have uh uh twelve thirteen percent maybe fourteen percent yeah. water in it in the plant yeah. and that'll help a lot, bro. A, a lot. lot. Really? I see. I see. Yeah. Up to twenty. To it'll 30%. help. It'll. It'll help get the rest of. It'll help push everything out. The water pushes it out. It repels the oil because it's not going to mix. So yeah, that would make. Yep. It, yeah. okay. it would actually, it would actually kind of act like a hydraulic press in itself because that water pressure is pushing against the plant and then the oils. Yep. So it's more trying to turn to a gas. More yeah, more volume that's trying to push out now versus just what's in the plant. So that actually makes a lot of sense, dude. That's tight. Yeah, it does, and man. also if you do press, a lot of people go, you know, they think, oh, I got a say a ten ton press, right? And they're <laughs> pressing by the gauge on their their press, but it's really the the plate and SEI PSI that you got to be dealing with. So basically, you take your material in your bag, you measure <clears throat> width by length, then you times that. Depends on what size ton press you have. And then that then you convert that into PSI. So it might say eight hundred PSIs on your little whatever you call those things. But in reality it's two thousand PSI because of the platinum PSI it's the material width and length, not the plate size on your press. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, you've done a lot of stuff since you got your press. I see you got a lot of homework <laughs> done and a lot of research done in that short time. Good shit. Oh, I pressed everything in the house, bro. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> you don't have any flour left? Nope. Nope. Nice. I'm going to be doing the same thing with this girl right here. <laughs> uh, if you need Almost all of it. Where I'm at. Oh, yeah. Uh, I got a couple people that have given me that. Uh, uh, hold on. Where are you at? No, what I, state are you? Be... Yeah, what state are you in? Oh, I'm in Connecticut. You're in Connecticut, okay. bro. Yeah. Oh, shit, dude. I'm going to be in Hartford coming bro, up would... in just a couple months. Definitely come there see you. There you go. Yeah, I was trying to come see you guys in Boston, but uh, the car rental place I was going to rent a car from because my uh, wife's sister needed to get to work with my car. Uh, they just didn't have the car that morning. I. I don't believe in coincidences, so I believe everything happens for a reason. So I was just like, you know what? But it is what it is. That's me yeah, too. Definitely hard for I it. It. Reason. Yeah, I could have went. Like I, I could have just borrowed somebody's car, but I was like, you know what? This, nah, I'm good. Something <laughs> tell, it's, it's telling me not to go. You don't know. You could have crashed that day. Anything, anything. I don't believe in coincidences. Yeah, that's good. Really look at it. But yeah, you had a sick booth, man. You guys yeah, are well, doing it up there. Well, Connecticut, we'll definitely see there because that one's oh, yeah, sweet. I could, I could walk to that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right down the street. How, uh, where's Connecticut at uh, compared to Arizona? Right next to New York. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. New York. You're way out like, there. The little East Coast, Coast, baby. Yeah, um, right next to Mass and Rhode Island. Well, Rhode Island is a little, it's littler than us, but I think we're the second littlest state. But very expensive as hell to live in, too. Oh, hell yeah. For no reason. Java, no, dude, next Sunday, let's do that. I'll have you on because I have ball pythons as well. I have a pie ball and I have a banana. Um, a banana blast. So we should definitely get on there. If anybody else has a snake, let's do a snake uh, show up next Sunday. That would be tight, dude. I have oh, an yeah. exotic reptile snakes. as well. <laughs> School of Crop. He's got a brand new. What you got, uh, bro? I actually have well, what I have, you're not supposed to have. So I'm not sure if I want to. Show it. I already got an idea now. Didn't you pick up a rattlesnake from the outside? <laughs> well, I, I used to hunt rattles, or I used to go find rattlesnakes before I grew. I used to go catch rattlesnakes and do all that. So, venomous reptiles used to do my thing. That's tight. Hell yeah. Yeah, so. Crazy, crazy. Allegedly, Welcome to Arizona. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I saw that permit you had, though. 
<laughs> Oakland, Arizona. <laughs> it's fun out here, man. All right, so just for the record, next Sunday, if you have reptiles, we're going to do a reptile show, like a little show and tell. So snakes, bearded dragons, illegal. What do you got? Illegal <laughs> animal. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Hell yeah! Let's get it. I got a couple tigers, you know. <laughs> <laughs> They're only two to three thousand dollars. A couple monkeys. That's I it. I won't tell you guys. I'll make it a surprise. A little I finger monkey. monkey. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> I would love to have a monkey. Oh oh uh oh! We got another person. I have a red tail boa. Fuck yeah, dude, bring it. Ooh, okay, red tail okay. bolas are nice. I'm all about them snakes, though. I ain't gonna lie. I love snakes. Red tail sure. bolas get huge, bro. Yeah, you they can find do. a bunch of very community if you're loving them. You got some rare turtles, huh, Ricky Bobby? Okay. Pythons, there's certain pythons that can get pretty freaking big, too. Like, they can get, what, like 15, 20 foot? Oh, yeah, the Burmese. Yeah. Yep, the reticulated burning. That's crazy. We had big snakes when I was young. They, they, they ate a lot. Like, I can imagine having, like, what are you supposed to feed them? Like, full bone bunnies and shit? They do. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah like, that's expensive. That's, that's kind of the suckier thing. <laughs> the, the big, oh, damn it. You know how much a whole grown bunny costs to try to give your snake every, every month? <laughs> Not if you breed them. Oh, yeah, huh? I never thought about that. See, you're smarter than me. <laughs> hey, bunnies. That's you've done this before. Yeah, that's what you got. You got a bunny farm. What outside? <laughs> Go to the outside. <laughs> hey, bring it. Yeah, falling. Let's just see. Um, let's see some cocks here. Bring the chickens out. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Are you fucked me up? I'm not looking at the screen. You're like, let's see some cocks. I'm like, hold on. What? Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Do I need to turn around and look? What kind of channel is this now? What's going on? Yeah, like, what? No oh, ditty, no, we got... We got... Yep, and then this guy has a Afghan leopard gecko. Yeah. Oh, oh, man. Those are nice. That sounds expensive. <laughs> yep, yeah, okay. There are no cogs, only hens. That's so funny. Well, bring the hens. That's awesome. Lacey, Even better. My wife said when we get our, because we rent a townhouse, but when we um when we move, she said we're getting a chicken farm. So um, hell yeah, chicken hell yeah. Right Chickens are dope, yeah. bro. For real. Yeah, dude. I think they're. I think it's cool, especially like you get fresh eggs and then. There's um, a lot of work. Little reptiles, no, they're not so. If you just let them run around on free range, no, nah, you gotta clean their pen up there. and shit, dude. They'll stink like a mother. Well, that's you gotta, a like take care of them. Yeah. yeah, they're they're kind of a, if you've got a bunch of chickens and you really take care of them, if you gotta mess with them almost every day. Uh, mm -hmm. if you're serious about it, no, for real, yeah. Chickens are dope, little reptiles, yeah, yeah they are, so they are dope. Chickens before is every year. When Logan was little, we would um do the thing where you drive out to the country and then they give you the incubator, they give you the eggs and the thing, and then you hatch the eggs for them, and then you bring the chickens back to the farm, and then the, the chickens live the rest of their life out on the farm. But you get wow. to see them hatch, you get to see their little like fluffy little bodies jump around <laughs> and everything. They're funny as shit when they're small, dude. Hell yeah. It's a pretty cool yeah. experience. Yeah. Yeah, maybe maybe um, somewhere in the area they have farms, and it's pretty cool. I think it's like one hundred and thirty-five dollars, and they give you everything that you need, and you get to like have like six or seven chickens hatch, and you get to watch them come out of the eggs, and it's pretty tight. Wow, yeah, yeah that'd that'd be turkeys, kind of, bro. <laughs> that'd be cool to do with the family, you know. No, real talk, it is. The kids, well, I mean, the kids fall in love with them. It's a, it's a whole thing. It's a whole process to learn, but it's dope. I think it's a good experience. I liked it when I was younger. And just make sure their coop is protected. 
kids. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Especially out here in AZ. Oh, 100. Yeah, Kyle's on your ass. <laughs> Kyle's will be all the way up on you. He's like, what's up? <laughs> There's a bunch of, I mountain bike a lot, dude. There's Kyle's everywhere out here. There's big packs of them, too. Your Kyle just lost the chick. Oh, yeah. That is the only thing I'd be worried about is like natural predators, like foxes and shit like that. Trying you gotta to be pretty it. far out, honestly, for any uh, thing to really think it's gonna mess with you. They get too much anxiety around the city and shit to mess with you. But if you're way out in the bush, like you know, five miles in or something, that's when you really should be careful. You're in bear country, and when you're you know a few miles in now, you're in uh, you know big cat country and coyote country. Yeah, I've seen yeah, some pretty big cats out here. We're no yeah, longer man is the threat; it's nature and, and wildlife. Yeah, exactly. But when when you're in the city and you're kind of hanging out in parks, like a quarter mile in, half mile in, mile in, usually I haven't seen anything. I've done a lot of riding, but uh, yeah, way out there, the yeah, it gets creepy. When you're ten miles into the woods. And you ain't seen nobody the whole way. You know, it's like, man. <laughs> oh, I don't piss something off out here. <laughs> no, I definitely do it. All right, well, let's let our joints, which I'm already lit, do one last smoke session. Um, and then next week, I'm going to make a post, is Reptile Show and Tell on Madman Plant. And we'll... And we'll probably do a little bit longer session just because there's going to be a lot of people who want to share and tell. Try to do like five, ten minutes each person, you know, give them a single spotlight. But that's what we're trying to do with this community. It's not always just about weed. It's about animals. Yeah, yeah. It's about nature or, you know, anything cool. About, and if you live in a very unique area and there's something cool you want to show us, let me know, dude. We'll put you on the fucking show. And, you know, my thing is, this is about, that was fast. You saw him. Yeah, there you go. Watching him. Yeah, that's good. That's just the support, last support trolls. Yeah, how many trolls nets are you going to run? Four or three? Uh, This is three. One, two, three. Are you spreading them out further and further on each one, or they're all just yep. riding through the same hole all the way up? No, so these ones out here look like they're coming straight, but as you get further in, like this one's bent, they will stay bent. And uh, they're going to get much taller. They're going to want to get probably about this tall still because it's the type of genetic they are. So as, as they go, these branches will never go up straight through here. They'll all be turned and brought. Uh, over so this branch might end up over here out of this hole because it'll get that much taller uh, And then on so they go kind of spread from here, you know, what I mean like this now one went this way and up. We need all that in the middle or are you just gonna leave that? Like look at this right here. This branch went this way all the way out. I mean all the way up Yeah, so and this one goes all the way over here so it's all the way over here, and it'll make it up through here, but it starts way over here. It ends then, up right there. And then are you going to defoliate that middle and the inside, or are you just... Yeah, so down out? here, down here, this stuff, we'll get all this stuff, like these leaves right here, we'll get defoliated, even though they're not, there's nothing wrong with this leaf. The plant uh, doesn't have a problem having this leaf down there, or else it would be doing something with it. So then... Uh, the leaves are fine right now, but over some time, uh, they'll I'll pull all these off and right below this net, basically. But most of the stuff that you see in here, like this leaf right here and stuff in here, I'm not going to touch any of this stuff. Uh, and some of these leaves, like this top leaf right here, anything that you see that will stop penetration in is going to get taken off. Like this will get taken off, that will get taken off, and some of them will... Uh, as I look through the canopy from the top to see the, to get the most light because these are going to have a cola like this plant right here is going to make big bud right here and then this is all going to connect from right here all the way up to here 
so it'll be about 18 inches of cola uh, from here because it's just now getting started. It's a weird plant. <laughs> like, look at this. This shit will almost connect <coughs> this to this, but then everything from here will be connected. And this will be like this big <coughs> way out here. It's going to be an awesome meeting. It's super dope. And that, and that system they're using, that's just bamboo with some clips? Yeah, so this is bamboo. And then uh, it's just this really strong metal. And then I put these ties around it and the rubber because it makes it to where there's no slack at all in it. None. And these metal things, I can't even bend it with my finger. See? They're really strong gauge metal. And uh, this whole thing is very solid. And it's on a two by four uh, mounted to it. They can't come off. And then I have braces that I built. And then these top braces are just for this top trellis, like that one over there. And uh, yeah, it cost me about 15 bucks to build this whole little thing right here. Yeah, look at you, dude. That's 20 cool. bucks. Um, yeah, but I, I used to I not grow like this. I had, I got, I took the fold out tables. And I would have, not in this room, a different house. And I have the six by four, two and a half foot tables. And I have them one here, one there, one there, one there, one there, and one there. And they have rollers underneath them. And I would pull this whole thing all the way out to get into this side right here. And then I would pull this one this way. And I would go in between them. And I, so I'd literally fill it, fill it from wall to wall with no walkway. That's how I was doing it. Because I had, I had four of these lights that I would put in an area right here to cover it completely. Damn, son. But now I have a plant count because I'm in a state where there's plant counts. So I grow according to the plant count now. Mm. Yeah, it's always good to follow state, local, and laws. I don't want to yep. mess with anybody and I don't want to be messed with. So, you know, just trying to keep it clean. I just, if you're online, someone's going to get mad at you someday and want to dox you. And if the police want to come into your house, you should be able to let them in and feel comfortable with that. So I do. And I don't have a problem with that. So I know I can be online and whatever. And I'm never doing anything wrong. So I could never get in trouble. So if you had your plant count correct, then how could you get in trouble? Ever. You okay. could let the cops come right in and be like, yeah, come in, dude. What do you think's going on in here? Let's have a walk around. Have a look. I think that's also like, the transparency that we should have with law enforcement anyways is hey it's hard to have it yeah but it would be nice to have it just like that you know because yeah. i was watching the cop episodes where they were actually trying to get back a plot a pot plant that one of the neighbors <laughs> stole and the cop was literally like you know a couple of years ago we'd be rushing them for this and now we're trying to get a weed plant back from the neighbor you know like <laughs> right that's so funny but anyways, guys, um, I'm going to end the live because I'm going to get on to my day and get everybody back to theirs. Uh, I want to thank everybody that participated, Gronomics, Creative, Despicable, and then Rare Kind. Thank you guys so much for coming on. Next week will be really fun. It's going to be all about reptiles and animals. And even if you don't have an animal, come on. And if you like animals and want to talk about them, the chat's here. You know, I really want to make this an educational but fun platform where it's not always just about talking shop. And, you know, we can have fun and have wild things. Maybe even do like um, like a pajama party where everybody, you know, comes in, you know, in pajamas. You know, something like, you know, just unique and different. Make it, you know, an experience that we can all like. And I really appreciate the audience and everybody that watches this, you know. And it really means a lot to me because I'm really just trying hard to be a community member and just tell everybody else our... And I got so many great people on this live and so many people in this chat right now. They're just amazing people. And, you know, you should all really be proud of yourselves and all your accomplishments and other things that you're doing to provide value and knowledge. Because whether you're doing live videos or you're just watching them, whether you're growing or just smoking, whether you just like cannabis in general, you're all part of that bigger, you know, movement that this all supports. And there's just so many great people here. I just feel so privileged to be here and to, you know talk to everybody. So um, it's really, really um, an awesome thing. So, and then let's see, we got some comments here. Madman, I'm gonna come check you out. Hartford, yep, please do. 
No thing of a job party. That's a great idea. They do that in offices. <laughs> yep. Have everybody had a nice Easter? That's the awesome thing I want to end with. So, guys, thank you so much. We will see you very soon. Uh, all my interviews with Grownomics and Creative are, will be posted this week on the website. So you can go. All the content is going to be uploaded this week. So anything that we have is going to be up. Anything that wasn't official shop is on YouTube. We have a bunch of new videos on there. Please check that out. And obviously I'm shadow banned. So if you would like to share my profile on your stories or in your feeds, I greatly appreciate it. I already did. Oh, dude, I did you. while we were on the live. And also make sure to join the website because that's where all the cool stuff is happening and we got tons of free stuff. I literally have a box this big and this wide. I need half. Of, of um, just giveaway items that we handpicked from <laughs> uh, Boston and everything like that. T-shirts, swag bags, backpacks, um, all types of smoking gear, accessories, little bongs, everything. So a lot of cool stuff. Um, so I just really appreciate everybody. And uh, thank you guys for being on here. And uh, we'll see you guys soon. Peace.